Okay, welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Joining us now from CBSSports.com, senior NFL columnist, Pete Prisco. Pete, how are you? What's up, Artie? How are you? Uh, well, uh, exciting times here. I'll tell you, the NFL is a machine. It never <laughs> stops. There's, the, the NFL is never not in the news. I mean, the Super Bowl just happened, and we're talking about free agency and everything else and this and that and the other. I mean, there, it, it's never not in the news, right? I mean, there's never a break in what you do, Pete. It's unbelievable. And, and I'll tell you what, you, you go from the Super Bowl, we were all down there, then you go to the Combine, then you got free agency. Then you got the draft. Then you got mini camp. You might squeeze it a couple of weeks off, and then you're back to training camp. And you know what? People have an insatiable appetite for it. They can't get enough. It's unbelievable. You can't feed the beast enough. That's right. And here we got the, you know, the basketball tournaments coming up. We have the NBA. We have baseball spring training, and all anybody wants to talk about is free agency in the NFL. <laughs> True. <laughs> it, I mean, it's what it's America's favorite game, right? I mean, come on. Hey, free agency obviously open at 4 Eastern today, Pete. Uh, the big splash was the Dolphins, uh, no pun intended. Uh, they land Mike Wallace as well as Danell Ellerby, the inside linebacker from, from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, how about Miami? Does this make them an instant contender in the AFC? Well, I don't think it makes them an instant contender, but, but what it does is it, it gives Ryan Tannehill some weapons, and he had to have weapons. I mean, they re-signed Hartline. And I think Wallace is a great signing. You know, there's one thing you have to look at when you look at Wallace. He averaged 17.2 per catch in his career. I mean, that's incredible. And he's deep speed. You can't teach that. Then the linebacker, you know, they go out and get Ellerby. They get rid of Dansby. They go get rid of Burnett, and they sign Philip Wheeler. And when you look at it, you got younger and faster, which is what you want to do uh, in the NFL. The other thing, Brent, is this. Ireland knows if he doesn't win this year, he's done. So he might as well spend the team money and try and get some success out of this season and maybe save his job. Yeah, well, the Dolphins were, you know, I, I watched uh, I watched them on Hard Knocks last year, and they, I really, based on that show, thought they were going to win one game. They overachieved. <laughs> Tannehill, Tannehill proved that he, you know, he's, he's, he's the real deal, I think, on some level. So, yeah, it'd be, uh, be interesting. I, it's a team I kind of root for for some reason. So it'll be interesting to see them get... Them get better. You were mentioning your Chiefs, huh? Uh, they, they got the well, they have the number one pick finally. And number one pick, yeah. And 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 Alex Smith, obviously, it, it became official today, where they traded with the 49ers right, to get him to play quarterback. And and on that topic, Pete, I mean, uh, what do you think about the Chiefs? They they got Alex Smith. He was playing well before Kaepernick, uh, you know, replaced him. And now they get the top pick. Can they kind of turn this thing around a little bit? Well. I don't think so. I don't think Alex Smith is the kind of guy that turns around a franchise. I think he's a stopgap guy. You know, they went out and signed Chase Daniel today, too, the backup in New Orleans. So now you give, give Alex Smith about four games, and the fans are going to be saying, okay, he's not the answer. They, sign, they play Chase Daniel. It makes no sense to me. If you got two of those guys, then maybe you equal one franchise quarterback, at least in the mind of Chiefs fans. I don't see it that way. So why wouldn't you, if you don't think there's a great guy in this draft, wait then. All you're doing when you sign a guy or trade for a guy like Alex Smith and give up draft picks and then you have to pay him is you're delaying the inevitable. So I, the Chiefs are going to be the Chiefs. Yeah, they have some talent on that team, and I think Andy Reid's a good football coach, but I don't think Alex Smith puts them over the top, particularly in the division with Peyton Manning. Well, what do you do if you're the Jets? The Jets are that rare team where they literally need help everywhere. There's not, there's not one... There's not one position with that the Jets don't need to improve in. Uh, you know, they need an offensive line. They need a defensive line. They need a quarterback. A, they need running backs. I mean, it's a bad, te it's a bad team, Artie. You're yeah. correct. It's a horrible team. And, and you know, that's why people say, "Well, why would they trade Revis? Why would they trade Revis? Why wouldn't you?" To get you're something, yeah. <laughs> right. If you're if he's there, you're a bad team, and you're gonna, he's going to leave anyways if you don't give him a new contract. So trade him, get some picks, try and build for the future. And you look around that roster, and you're, you make a good point. Now, you know, the left tackle is a good player. Ferguson, the center is a good player. Mangles, they have a couple other good players. But as units, they're not good on any, in any one unit. They can't rush the passer. They can't throw the football. They lack weapons. I mean, it's a bad combination. So you're correct. The Jets stink. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, we talked about the Dolphins and, and the splash they made today. Uh, go down in order maybe some of the top other headlines in your mind that, uh, that happened today. Well, 
I, I mean, I think when you look at what, what went on in Cleveland, you know, Cleveland wants to get better on defense. They're switching to a 3-4. They go pay Kruger. I think that's a lot of money for Kruger, but they get an outside rusher. They went out and got Desmond Bryant. He over the great mug shot from his DUI arrest a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, they signed him, and, and so I think they, they really helped themselves on defense. I think that's interesting. And then the Ravens, you know, everybody's killing the Ravens, which, you know, they win the Super Bowl. You have Flacco. You re-sign them to a long-term contract. Well, you can't keep everybody. And so they trade Bolden. Everybody goes, well, why do you get rid of Bolden? Well, Bolden's old. I mean, he's old, and they couldn't afford him, so you trade him. Then you get rid of, you know, they can't keep Ellerby. Ellerby goes to Miami. They couldn't keep Kruger. But they have Upshaw waiting to take Kruger's place. They'll find another cheaper version of the linebacker. And as long as you have Flacco and that passing game around, you'll be fine. So, uh, most people are killing the Ravens. I am not. What do you think of Buffalo releasing Fitzpatrick after they gave him, you know, fifty-six million just a couple of years ago? Um, what do you think of the move, and who's going to play quarterback in Buffalo? Well, yeah, they're going to have to draft a quarterback. But, but the bottom line on that is, but when you rush, to, a guy has like six good games, and all of a sudden people in Buffalo are going, "You got to pay him. You got to pay him." Why they rushed to pay him in the first place? It was a bad move. The guy has a lollipop arm. He's a smart quarterback. He can't throw the football down the field. He can't drive the football. And, and they rushed to make it a, a, a decision to give him a new contract because they wanted to feel good in the city. It made no sense, uh, and they paid for it. Now they don't have a quarterback. They have to go out and get one. you got to remember, Maroney, the coach up there now, Doug Marone, is, uh, was at Syracuse, and Ryan Nassif played for him at Syracuse, so he might be their quarterback maybe if they draft him either in the first or second round. $56 million, What a great mistake to be made. <laughs> I mean, $56 million. Just, you know. uh, the Giants, my football Giants, are, are we on an upswing or a downswing? What's going what's to happen in the next couple of years with these guys? They're on an upswing. I mean, they were a good football team this year. I think they just, you know, a couple things went wrong. They still have talent on the team. They still have a quarterback. Uh, I thought Nick's getting hurt hurt them because it put a lot of pressure on Cruz. To, you know, he couldn't handle the double. It was the first time he had to handle the double. But when you got Cruz and Knicks and, and you have uh, Eli Manning, and I think, you know, the running game will be better because I think Wilson's going to be an explosive back in their offense. And they got to get the pass rushers to play well. Tuck stunk last year, um, you know, and, 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 you know, Pierre Paul didn't play with the way everybody expected. They had a lot of injuries in the secondary. But Jerry Reese is one of the best in the business at, at getting talent. And Tom Coughlin is one of the best coaches. They'll be back. They'll be right in the mix again next year. Well, I hope so. I don't know. I, again, uh, as, as a Giant fan, I revel in the fact that uh, they'll be in the mix and that the Jets do, in fact, stink. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Well, uh, you know what, Pete? Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks, man. And uh, come back and say hi again, all right? Anytime. You know, guys. Take care, man. Thanks, Pete.